I'm sorry. You caught me in the middle of being a geek. It's, um, it's kind of a thing I do. Anyway, let me put this on my end table. Okay, on the pizza box on top of my end table. Yes, I am that much of a geek. Um, where to start? I am Valerie Reified, which you knew because you clicked the little linky thing, or there's a linky thing in the top corner, and also I have a bad habit of going out of frame of the YouTube shot. Yes! See what's over there? It's this nine-headed hydra um, that is offering free lollipops and blowjobs. Completely unrelated to one another. So, because I don't have video editing software, this is going to come up as some sort of stream of consciousness unless I derail myself far too badly and I just decide to stop and go with take 12. Um, which does happen. Though not with my first vid. Anyway, um, completely aside, I wanted to talk about people who believe in radical self-acceptance. I.e., if it works for me, it works for everybody. Um, also known as the kind of people who say everyone should walk to work because they live a block and a half from it. Um, if it takes you very, very little effort to see yourself in a way that you're comfortable, of course you're going to be in favor of, of everyone seeing themselves in a way that they're comfortable. Um, but for some people we need minor amounts of medical intervention. And don't say this is a modern artificial idea. We had, quote unquote, um, pagan male priestesses riding pregnant white mares. Now, for those of you who know anything about endocrinology, um, pregnant white mares will have pregnant mare urine. Pregnant mare urine will contain primarin, which was, up until a decade or so ago, the choice in artificial, well, not artificial, but the kind of estrogen that you can take in pill form. Now we have all sorts of wonderful, much more bioidentical types, you know, 17 BS radials, as they're called. Um, so my first point, as I've just made, is that transition medicine has been around for thousands of years and has been taken advantage of for thousands of years. You know, you've had people drink uh, you've had people drinking and eating phytoestrogenic foods or phytoandrogenic foods. Um you've had people transition since before the Roman Empire reached its apex. Um you know, it is much like Senator Goldwater's argument in favor of gays serving in the military. Why not? They've served honorably since at least the time of Julius Caesar. Uh, so that's the first point. The second point is from a harm reduction um, point of view. I'm going to take these off because I hate how the reflection flashes off my glasses, even though I really like my glasses, and I like how they frame the face. And I've had these since 2004, so five years before I transitioned, five and a half actually. Oh, they're dirty. Um, but I'm going to set them aside and resist the urge to clean them for um, the, the other couple minutes it takes to film this video. Um, so harm reduction. Now most left-wingers believe in harm reduction. Most people who preach, preach radical self-acceptance being left-wingers, and most of them believing in harm reduction as well. When it comes to heroin, some reason not with transsexuality. So here we have spironolactone. It is a potassium sparing diuretic. What that means is the salt that is in potato chips goes out of your system and the salt that is in bananas stays in your system. And that inhibits testosterone production and the degree to which it's taken up by the body as well. It also lowers blood pressure. Before I started this I had a blood pressure of 155 over 92. Now I have a blood pressure closer to 140 over 86. So I went from having high, um, high blood pressure, or as the lay people call it, high blood pressure, to having kind of bad but still acceptable blood pressure, or as the lay people call it, pre-hypertension. This apparently, however, 
is politically problematic and must be stopped. Um, so is this. This is Provera. It reduces testosterone counts again. Um, and also, you know, helps me fill out. And so is this, which is Estragel and reduces my risk of developing cardiovascular disease and prostate cancer, but increases my risk of developing breast cancer. And I pay for all these. This, this is not publicly funded. This comes out of my pocket and the pocket of my employer's health insurance program into which I pay by virtue of me get, allowing them to earn lots of money from my labor. So I have to ask, what's the big deal? I take blood pressure medicine, which I've taken for seven months, which makes me healthier and also not wanting to kill myself or not wanting to die or not feeling like I will die. I don't really know how to explain it. I just know I couldn't envision myself getting to my 41st birthday. Um, what's wrong with that? What is so unbelievably awful about my girlfriend calling me her girlfriend? What is so terrible about finally feeling like you're an actual human being as opposed to some constructive fiction who will never exist? What is so awful about happiness that you feel some political need to destroy it? I have never understood this. I don't think I ever will understand this. I am, however, seized with curiosity. Why is my existence so objectionable to you? Um, I don't know where to go from there. I'm, I'll have other talks on, you know, um, trans topics later, like why mm, the fact that anyone with a working internet connection should understand that trans women don't have to be post-operative to be women. Um, or why, you know, pre-transition girls are still girls. Um, why a closeted woman's narrative is still a woman's narrative. But right now I just want to, I, I just want to ask, this makes me happy and it doesn't make me ephemerally happy. It gives me energy and reduces by an order of magnitude at least my chance of ending myself. So why would you want to stop this unless you wanted me to end myself? Why would you feel the need to make it difficult for me to exist unless you hated the fact that I existed? Um, I've never really gotten a satisfactory answer to that. I've never really gotten a satisfactory answer from self-styled radicals as to why it was radical to engage in dyke bashing. And that's all I have to say.